Hot 97, Laura Styles. I got my boy Cash One in here. And we're doing something hey. a little bit different, right? Yeah. So me and Cash One, and I'm not going to take full credit for it because I know uh, Shawnee Culture's in it too. Yeah. We decided to make sure that we expose our audience to some international vibes, mm-hmm. people, which, which we're all about, and the people ne- deserve it and yeah. need it. And you know, we have a huge platform. Uh huh. So, and every time Cash One, who's a world traveler, a little co- bit, he comes from anywhere in the world. He always, you know, I always have to hear about his stories and his travels, but it's an amazing thing to hear. Um, just to hear how hip hop culture in its own has, you know, has just taken over so many parts of yeah. the world. So, what happens is, right, I go to Asia, not Asia, let me stop that, Japan. Yes. And then in Japan, people always tell me, like, yo, you need to go here or you need to go this place and that place. And I'm like, I don't even understand how hip hop can be even popular. They're like, yo, have you been to Malaysia yet? And I'm like, no. It's like, you should go. I'm like, no. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, yo, no, because I don't know. What's, I'm like, yo, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I'm gonna, what am like, I gonna go do? What in am Malaysia? I gonna do in Malaysia? Right. Right. So right, right. After like my boy Nookie was trying to tell me for like almost two years, like, right, yo, you gotta right. go, you gotta go, you gotta uh-huh. go. There's these dudes down there, they're killing it. You gotta go. And I'll say, all right, fine, fuck it, let's go. We finally went, <laughs> right? Okay. And I was like. In awe. I was like, yo, this is crazy. The way they got the clubs popping out there, the music scene, not only that, like hip hop, the business scene, because it's like the, you know, the business side of things. These guys own stores, sneaker stores, barber shops. Like, mm-hmm. come on, like you could tell them everything. This is Joe Flizzo. Yo, what up, my Joe, man? Joe, welcome. <laughs> I know we start going. I'm Joe Flizzo yeah. from Malaysia. What's good? Let Joe me, Joe, we come t- to Malaysia, don't be scared we- like that. <laughs> Like, nah, come on, man. Nah. We tend to go off and start talking right. amongst yeah. ourselves, but okay. it's really important for us to paint okay. the picture of how incredible no, no, no. the movement is. Because, I, you know, he, when I first talked to him, and we here in America sometimes are so, like, tainted because we, we make jokes like, this guy's the sheriff, he's yeah. a manager, he's a rapper, he's a dentist. How could you, how could you be everything? And we make okay. fun of it, right? Mm-hmm. But when he was explaining a little bit of, of your background, I was he's like, you don't understand. This guy does it all. Yeah, you don't understand. So no. how about how about we go through the beginning? Okay. Okay, because uh, we go through the beginning and tell right. me a little bit about yourself in the background. What is what is it that you do? Well, my name is Joe Flizzo. I run a music label called Cartel Records. Um, past, I think, four years ago, we kind of like merged with Sony Music. So mm-hmm. we call Sony Cartel out of Malaysia and primarily a hip-hop label. We started off as a hip-hop label in 2006. Mm-hmm. And we kind of got into doing a lot of other things as, a, I mean... At that point in time, it was a matter of survival because we weren't moving those a lot of CDs. You know, like Malaysia's piracy is huge. Like you could probably sell ten thousand CDs like properly, but like they they're pushing out half a million. CDs. Right, right, right. You know right, what right. I mean? It's so, crazy. Um, yeah. So you know, we were just trying to survive. So we started a publishing company, then we started a talent management company. And okay. We got into retail, like my homeboy. Way from Titanium, you know, had a yeah. bit of success with, you know, he opened up a couple of barbershops in uh-huh. Thailand. And he just told me, like, yo, you should do this in Malaysia. So now we got five barbershops. So you took the same idea. Because, yeah. I mean, where's somebody, we're going to get yeah. him on the show we're when he comes back. No, that no, story no, no. is... We're going to get to them. Where's the so man? let me ask you a question, right? Uh-huh. When it comes to, like, like hip-hop... Right. How in Malaysia do you get ex- did you get exposed to hip hop? Like, was there were there other people rapping before you? Like, how does it even? Yeah, I- and this is really pre-internet too. Yeah, because okay. you guys you guys understand Malaysia is like in the southeast Pacific yeah, somewhere. Yeah, like, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, of Asia. Yeah, just before Australia, in yeah. Asia, then it's Australia. Yeah, right. Um, I got into hip hop in the '80s. Like, I had an uncle who, you know, he was the first member of the family to have a CD player. So he used to have mad CDs. And I I used to just, I was like maybe eight, nine years old. Mm-hmm. And I used to go through all his CDs. He had all types of music, like Cool in the Gang. He also had his hip-hop CDs and cassettes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, as a kid, what really attracted me to hip-hop initially was, you know, the covers of the CD, al- the album covers. Like, you know, the LL Cool J album covers. or The, the first CD I picked up was Tone Lo. This Tone is Lo. Ni- so yeah, this Lo. Is like back in the day, you know? <laughs> And, you know, I didn't really, I mean, I just, I was just attracted to the movement, the culture, like how outspoken, you know, hip hop yeah. artists were, you know, how they were talking about subject matters that other singers weren't talking about and how they would just go into detail. Like, you know how graphic hip hop is lyrically. And, you know, so that's how I started. And I think in, in early 90s, like not a lot of people listened to hip hop, you know, but there was a small movement. There were already groups. Yeah. Um, that had, you know, pioneered hip-hop in Malaysia. And I would attribute that to the DJs. Like, the DJs would break records and start playing hip-hop records. And they were also, like, um, you know, some B-boys, you know? Mm. S- small graffiti scene going on. But 
I don't think it it came together maybe like with the internet. Like I think when the internet came about, that's how like you know this small movement came about together. And we we used to do gigs like have like maybe three hundred people, four hundred people, and it started to grow like that. So that was I started rapping in ninety eight. So you were part of a group. I was part of a group. Yeah, I was part of a group. We were signed to EMI back in the day for like... We started off independent. Then uh-huh. we, got, we got signed to EMI. Yeah. What was it called? My group was called Too Fat. <laughs> too Fat? Yeah, the yeah. old too school. Fat, like, the old school old hip-hop school. names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too Fat, Too P-H-A-T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, but yeah. you guys were getting money. Yo, that money must be long. You guys were getting money since the early 90s, nah. huh? Well, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that money long. Nah, but I mean, it wasn't until 2006 where I actually, you know... Um, started to learn about the business, you know, of hip hop. But you know, first and foremost, I wanted to own my masters, so that's why I started the label. Um, and you know, I just started. I didn't want to be the lowest in the food chain because yeah. that's where I was at initially as an artist, you know. And when the label like folded, like everybody just went down with the label. So I just didn't want to see myself in that situation. So I got out of that contract in two thousand and five and started my independent label. What were some of the Boom. first hip-hop artists that made it to Malaysia, like, touring? Touring? Yeah, like, like you were be like, oh, my God, so-and-so's in town. Being um, that, you know, hip-hop MC was... MC Hammer in and Vanilla Ice. <laughs> <laughs> was, no. was, that, was that, like, one of the first shows you went to I'll go see? I'll be real with you. Like, yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> and Paula Abdul came, and you know she had that track where the where the, where the the cat was yeah, rapping. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. yo, the cat came out, dude, in the, Malaysia. They had the cat. Like, oh, okay, man, so, you go. But, but on the real, like... um. I mean, I believe okay. MC Hammer in Vanilla Ice. One of the first, like, when I was 21 years old, we did one of the first hip-hop gigs. Like, we put together, you know, we had, like, 5,000 ringgit, which is maybe, like, $2,000. We put together, me and my best friend. And um, we we got a bit more money, and then we flew out, like, a freestyle from Arsonist Crew. So that was, like, an uh, underground gig. So, right, right, I right. I mean, I would say that, yeah, freestyle was one of the first to come and perform. Um, we had Zion I, Come out as well, but yeah. for the most part, it was a lot of like, yeah, small acts. Uh, ever since then, we've had Kanye came out in 2004. We opened up for Kanye in 2004. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Pharrell's been out, The Roots have been out. We've seen quite a number of yeah. hip hop. Cast One's been out. Mm-hmm. Cast One's been, Cast out. One's been <laughs> out. DJ <laughs> Fat Fingers been out. <laughs> Fat Fingers. Big Ben's been out. Yeah, the, been the, out. the heavy hitters have moved over there. We just waiting for Laura to come out. Yeah, right? we waiting for what Laura. What did I tell you that I can't wait? Come so on. let me tell you, Cast One is the one that I go to. I'm like, Cast One, okay. this is what I want to do, right? He knows my obsession with Japan. I, I still haven't gone there. I've gone all over the world, but okay. Asia is a new frontier for me. So I recently went to Thailand. Yeah, and you didn't come to Malaysia. It's like yeah, an hour listen, flight. I didn't know. I didn't know. So I, I went to Thailand. I spent a couple. I spent like almost two, two and a half weeks. You got to give her baby steps, a little bit, yes. at a time. Okay, okay. little bit at a time. Okay. So she I, can't just... I experienced, you know, the whole titanium movement right. and my boy Buddha and Ono who uh-huh. run it, and it's incredible, so right. incredible that I'm going back in December. Yeah, there you go. And then maybe I should make a pit stop in Malaysia. You should. That's, you must. That's these guys in Malaysia. It's right. so it's awesome. In Malaysia. You also mentioned to me um, that you did were you, uh, MTV. You work. You were like a VJ, you, or you did like a well, music he, video he show. Did his own show. His own yeah. Okay. Well, basically, we produce like after. I mean, it's the same. Like when we started traveling, like um, when I started going on tour to places like Japan, and we started shooting. Uh-huh. I had a cameraman with me, and what we did was we kind of like uh, went back to Malaysia and we chopped up this pilot. You know, so we thought it'd be a great idea to have this show where the concept is. It's like a travel show, but your your local tour guide is your local rap star or your local. You're it's the like a hip hop Anthony Bourdain. Exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so this show is called Hip Hopping Asia. Um, we we we're already in our second season, but I mean after two seasons, we've pretty much covered the entire Asia. Right. So what I did was um, with season one, we went to countries like Sri Lanka. We went uh, we went to Sri Lanka, Philippines, Indonesia, Taiwan, Japan, Thailand. What else? Um, season two, we went we went everywhere basically. Oh, Just okay. to can discover I, can I, how hip hop is. Can I watch this on in, on YouTube? Yeah, you yeah. Can check it out. On okay. YouTube, you guys, you guys need another cameraman. Come again? <laughs> you guys need another cameraman. The cameraman? Yeah, I'll be a cameraman. Yeah. Lawrence okay. has a whole of mic. Yeah, no doubt. No, no. You know what I'm saying? Season well, three. Me, season let, three. Let, let us produce season three so but we can run around with you guys. It was amazing. Like even for I mean, because we, for the most part, like hip hop in in Asia, you know, there's individual movements, you know, mm-hmm. because we're kind of like separated or divided by the language. So that's that's the reason why, you know, artists in Taiwan might not be popping off in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or Malaysian artists that rap in Malay, like me, ain't popping off in Taiwan. But 
I think the people that are running these, uh, you know, our peers across across Asia, you know, we have everybody's on that same tip. We just want to you try and unite Asian hip hop. And so what happened was in 2008, I think that was the start of you know how Asian hip hop came together. Yeah. Because um, Titanium, they 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 did the first ever Asian hip hop festival, and they brought everybody from all over Asia, you know, to Bangkok. They had Nas headlining the show, which was so kind of like co-signed the whole thing, the mm -hmm. whole movement. So after, you know, after that weekend in, in Bangkok, I told I told Kanwin Taite, like, yo, I, I'm going to try continue this, you know? And mm -hmm. um, we had this show called Hip Hop in Asia. So dope. I went yeah. with the guys. I went with Titanium to, um, I think it was called the Blue Mountain... Blue Mountain Music Festival, which was like, I don't know, their version okay, of Coachella. Yep, yep. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Like, literally, I was there, it was like, I don't know, I, maybe like 80,000 people. Uh -huh. It was like a carnivals and like rides. And, you know, it yeah. was bonkers. It was so dope. Yeah, so I just want to cast one for the honest to share because he was like, I'm like, yo, are these guys are legit. He's like, no, 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 they're legit, legit. <laughs> He's like, no, so were... legit. He was like, you know, uh, tell him, I want you to tell the airport story. Oh, the airport yeah. story? Yo, so. <laughs> Yeah, he laughing because you know what's gonna happen, right? We were there. I was DJing a club, and it was this crazy club. Like, it's, I think it was Roots, crazy yeah, club. Man. It was uh -huh. like on a rooftop, bananas. So uh -huh. I'm stressing because I have an early morning flight the next day. Uh -huh. So I'm like, yo, it's like 4 a.m. and uh -huh. our flight is like at nine. And he, this guy's like, yo, let's go eat. I'm like, I don't, I'm, I don't want to go pack. He's like, nah, 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 don't worry about it. So we go to eat. Like, this time it's like five or six. We get back to the hotel. And I'm like, yo, man, so I guess I'll be down here in like half an hour. He's like, what time's your flight? I was like, nine. He's like, don't worry about it. Come downstairs like at 8.15. <laughs> I was like, I was like 8.15. Wait, were you flying back home? I was flying to, to Japan. Maybe. I was flying to Japan. Okay, Whatever okay, it was, okay. it was still international. Yeah, you have to yeah, be there yeah. two hours ahead of, of time. Of course, of course. And, and the airport is like what? How far is the airport from? An hour. Yeah, it's an hour. hour away. So oh. he's like... He's like, your flight is at 9, come down at 8.15. Nah, nah. I thought you were coming out at 7 or something. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. So right? what happened? So, right, I'm like, I'm like, okay, whatever. So I go upstairs and I'm, I'm, I'm like drunk. I'm not really thinking about it. I'm like, yo, wait a minute. My flight's at 9. He said, come downstairs at 8. What is this guy doing? So I go downstairs, right? And he's like, he calls me. He's like, yo, we're downstairs. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm about to miss my flight. And I'm, I'm tight. I have a school face on. Like, this fucking guy's coming. I go downstairs and there's a... There's like cops chilling, you know, just chilling in front of the hotel, like on the motorbikes. And I'm like, he's like, yo, I got something for you. And I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, police escort. Watch this. Watch this shit. He goes, yo, you ready? Let's go. He told the police escort. And the first thing the cop, because Cass was staying at the Marriott, right? Which is on Jalan Bukit Bintang, which is the busiest yeah, it's like, street it's in like, KL. It's like Fifth Avenue. Oh, you know, my God. So I'm on Fifth Avenue. So it's, it's one way. It goes left. Like out, outside the hotel, you turn left. But the first thing the cop does is turn, he turns right and goes oh, against he goes traffic. Right, goes against traffic, stops traffic. He's like, all right, come on, let's go. So we're in the car, right? <laughs> going against traffic. Going and this is morning rush hour traffic. And we're just going, driving on the wrong side of the road. Oh. There's all types of crazy shit. And I'm like, I have the whole thing on tape. And I'm like, yo, this guy, this guy is major. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's, I, got, I got better hey. stories, right? We go to, uh, I'm, we're shopping, right? Mm -hmm. You know me, I do my sneaker thing. So we're at... We're at Nike. Like, over there, the sneakers are crazy. You can go to the Nike store and get stuff that's come out, like, six months ago, and it's be right there sitting on the shelf, right? Uh -huh. So we go to the Nike store, and I'm like, I just came from Japan, and I bought sneakers in Japan, mm -hmm. and I was tight, because when I got to Mal Malaysia, all of them were there for regular price. I'm like, yo, I'm buying all of these again. Yeah, I, get, I remember those. I want that one, that one, that one, that like, you know, I'm, I got, like... The LeBron 9s were out Yeah, and the LeBron 9. I got, like, seven pairs of, uh -huh. of kicks, right? And I'm ready to pay, because they're, like, regular price. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, cool, let's go. He goes... Wait a minute, let me make a call. I'm like, who's this guy calling? So he goes, he's like on the phone. He's like, I'm like, yo, what's going on? I'm about to pay. He's like, I'm a Nike ambassador. Let's hold on for a second. I was like, what? I was like, what do you mean? He calls somebody. And he's like, okay, hold on. He hangs up. He's like, they're gonna call you. To the person at the cash register, they're gonna call you, right? <laughs> <laughs> the phone rings. So he's like, okay, 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 okay. Half price. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, this guy right here is gold, That's man. That's amazing. Oh, man. This man's guy right... laughing because he, he he was there too when I did the same thing. That's yo, amazing. Few weeks ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right, so for the people who want to check out more of your projects and stuff, right. they can. What can we look for? On it's everything's on YouTube, obviously. Yeah, I'm on YouTube. I'm on Spotify. I'm on all that. Yeah. What? So you have all a project? The... You have a project that's buzzling right now? Um. No, I'm just working on my solo album. My second album's coming out. My second solo album. No, my third solo album. I have a quick question. Right. What, what were you doing at Harvard? Oh, yeah? 
Because uh, he's here because yes. he well, was at Harvard. Yeah. And I was like, what? oh. But he's, he has pictures with like Chris Paul and like Paul Gasol. What, was, what were all you guys well, doing yeah, at Harvard Yeah, basically, I together? mean, I just wanted to get out of my comfort zone. And, you know, you know, I had some free time in the summer, which I had already planned on coming to the States. But I was thinking like maybe I, I I could do I could go back to school. So I was looking for courses, and you know there's this course under um, Harvard Business School. It's called the Business of Entertainment, Music, and Sports. So it's a four day course. Uh, uh, Wait, did you just? It's a four day course. Yeah, it's just a four day like really. Okay. You know we do we did like eleven case studies, and it was like proper studying, right? But. So they don't announce the list of, you know, people that go, the, the participants until the morning of the course. Mm -hmm. And so I woke up really early. I was already in Boston. I woke up really early and I just went through, you know, the list of people. And first name I saw was Todd Smith. And I was like, I know this name, you know? Yeah. And then, like, next to it was LL Cool J, LLC. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> LL Cool J is going to be my classmate? <laughs> and then I see Paul Gasol, That's Chicago crazy. Bulls. And then Chris Paul was there with his brother CJ. You know, and everybody was je was there, you know, to genuinely, they, everybody wanted to study and learn. And, you know, it, it was a great experience. Uh, we, there were 67 people in the class from all over the world. Ma most of them were CEOs and CFOs from, like, major companies and, you know, broadcasting houses and stuff like that from so Brazil, tight. from China, from India. Laura, we need to take a Harvard course. Yeah, we, no. need, to, we need to make our way over For there. Me, I mean, like, it was... Probably the most inspiring four days of my life, like in a long time. I haven't felt so inspired. Like I left Harvard with, you know, a clearer picture of what I want to do back home and how I want to take this business to the next level. So it was great. And I got to thank, you know, our professor, Anita Alberti, that, you know, came up with this course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this program is an amazing program. Oh, so tight. Yeah. Yes. Okay, now we have a couple things on our bucket list, cast. We got that? we got to take this Harvard course. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I have to go to Malaysia now. Yeah. And look, Peter Rosenberg is snooping around because I have a feeling he wants in on this Malaysia Peter, trip Peter, you want to go to Malaysia? Two things. One, I can't find my wallet. Two, yes, oh, I want to go to Malaysia. This, this is my wallet, so don't look too hard. Yeah, I know. And yes, I want to go to Malaysia. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll go to Malaysia. I'll go to Malaysia to find that thing. <laughs> oh, man, oh, wallet, man. Well, Joe, listen for everybody. I got his money though. No. <laughs> for everybody, how can they find you online? You're on uh, on Instagram. Yeah, like, on this Flizzle. Guy, this, this guy's probably at Flizzle. Flaming on Instagram. F L I W Z O W. Yeah, Instagram's lit. Yeah. Do you right, like, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. There are a lot of more famous people back in Asia, but yeah. The we super, do our thing. Super dope. So you're going to help us too. I want you to connect us too. So whenever we have dope, amazing, uh, anyone in Asia that we, you think we should have on here, we would love to give you know right. them our platform to okay. tell their story. Because cool. I think it's important that, because you guys are amazing. What you do is amazing. Thank you. I mean, you know, on behalf of everybody in Asia, like I just want to say thank you to Hot 97 for keeping it real. You know, we was at some. I was at Summer Jam. And yeah. It was lit. <laughs> and, you coming yeah. to Summer Jam Tokyo? I mean, me being here is like, you know, it's an honor, you know. Yeah. It's an honor to have you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and then Summer Jam Tokyo is going to be lit. Yes, we're coming. We coming. Right, like, cool. I think the Asian crew is coming. Like, um, I already spoke to the Thai cats and everybody's, they got their tickets, they got their hotels booked. So nice. you're going to be there. You're going to be there, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm going. Go on, be like, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Yo, we got we'll, to get Laura out there. We'll talk about we that later. Get Laura out there. We'll talk about that later. And thank, you for, thank you for stopping by. No it was a thank pleasure you for having you. And don't, don't be scared to come to Malaysia, all right? Why do you keep saying that? No, because he said that no, at listen, first. It's, he was it's, like, it's not, it's no. not about being scared. It's that everybody's like, okay. if we, when you don't know. This is why we have But I don't so blame y'all because I think, I think the stories about Malaysia, like what you, what but you guys not, hear no, 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 here no, no, is no, no, not no. the right. It's not even that. It's okay. just that when you don't know, like okay. you have no idea. Like I went to, I went to Thailand. Okay, let right? me rephrase that. Now you got family out, you know you got family yeah. out in Malaysia, so please come. But for example, right? right. It's not about being afraid. It's about just not knowing or not having the idea. Because the first time I went to, the first time I went to, to, to Malaysia, I mean to Thailand, to Bangkok, I went on vacation. Mm -hmm. And I was just there. And I was doing stuff and I was walking around. I had no idea that, that hip hop was that like there that. was yeah. yeah so like yeah. I went there and I chilled I went to Bangkok Phuket whatever whatever came back home and it was cool I was like mm -hmm. alright cool I went to I went to Thailand and then when I went again to DJ and yeah. to see that's that that's what you saw that's when my yeah. eyes were open and yeah. I was like wow like you you know it's just it's not about being scared it's just like a lot of people are stuck in a 
in what you know, and it's mm-hmm. it, people have a fear of venturing out to different things True. and experiencing different things. Oh, when I when I when I came back from Thailand, they should have hired me as part of the Thailand tourism board. Right, <laughs> I was showing everyone pictures, telling yeah. them about my experience and how amazing it was. And me too. I mean, I'm not like cast, but I've done my fair share of traveling in Central and South America no and doubt. Europe. No doubt. I mean, I even been to Finland. But it, when when it came down to Asia, I was curious. Cause I, like he said, I I didn't yeah, know what to expect know. or where to go besides Japan. You know, hip hop is alive in Asia. So you know? listen, and whatever you know, whatever you guys put out here, whatever. Whatever records y'all break, like people in Malaysia, peak oh I know closely. Just know, <laughs> I yeah, just you know, know. Right? You know, yeah I know. know what it is. So <laughs> thanks again. Yes sir, thank you for having me. Flizzo, peace, one love.